Greetings, and welcome to the Open-Minded Skeptic Podcast. My name is Sharon Ann Rowland, and I'm your host. And on the podcast today, it will be Trump versus the storm. But not the storm that everyone's been talking about. We're talking about Trump versus Stormy Daniels and her lawyer, Michael Avenetti. Now, the big saying out there has been there's a storm coming, and there was, wasn't there? <laughs> there, was, there was the Stormy Daniel scandal. So this is a quite a bit of, uh, I'm going to, there was so much to it. You'll notice that my usual succinct paragraph was a lot larger this month. So I'm just going to go for it now. Are you ready? Yep. yep. Okay. So the Stormy Daniels dash Donald Trump scandal is a political scandal involving a non-disclosure agreement, an NDA, signed by US President Donald Trump's personal lawyer, not him, Michael Cohen, and adult film actress Stormy Daniels, just before the 2016 United States presidential election. After the existence of the NDA was revealed by the Wall Street Journal in January 2018, Daniels sued Trump and Cohen to argue that the agreement was invalid. The dispute has gained significant media coverage and has drawn legal attention to Cohen's involvement in the, mat- in the matter. The first reports of an alleged affair between Trump and Daniels, and by the way, I don't think a one-night stand is an affair. Do we all agree on that? Yep. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to yeah, call especially it. Especially with a hooker. Or... <laughs> so I'm just going to say a one-night stand. Um, So the first reports of an alleged one night stand between Trump and Daniels were published in October 2011 by the blog The Dirty and the magazine Life and Style. I think I'm going to have to go Google that soon. Around the same time, Daniels talked about the alleged affair with the gossip magazine In Touch Weekly. (laughs) <laughs> which chose, oh my god the names here which chose not to publish the interview is that Sheila cracking up no. so, sorry that's me <laughs> which chose not to publish the interview after Cohen threatened to sue the magazine on January 12 2018 this year the Wall Street Journal reported that Cohen paid Daniels 130 grand which What's that in Australian dollars? About 200 grand? Yeah, yeah, about that. In October 2016, a month before the election. To stop her from discussing an affair or the one night stand she allegedly had with Trump, well, we know she had it with him in 2006, a lawyer for Daniels made claims that the payment was a cover up, while others also raised questions which has since been admitted as true in a guilty plea by Cohen in criminal court proceedings about whether the NDA itself constituted an illegal campaign payment and therefore criminal violation. Cohen on January the 14th denied the existence of an affair on behalf of his client Trump, but on February the 13th he acknowledged having paid Daniels, this is Cohen having paid Daniels, 130000 saying the payment was made with his own funds. So the 130 grand was paid by Cohen from his own money. That's interesting. On March Mm. 6, Daniels filed a lawsuit against Trump claiming that the non-disclosure agreement she had signed about the alleged affair was invalid because Trump had never personally signed it despite acknowledging that she accepted the payment made in consideration for her silence on the matter. Oh, my God, this woman's a gold digger. Yeah. This is awful. (laughs) This is absolutely awful. I I, I wrote this about uh, three weeks ago, but um, I'm just really, it's just hitting home to me. So she she took the money, but then she went and talked to everybody. And, and because, and he didn't even, even Trump hadn't actually signed any NDA. The, it, so the only agreement he had to be silent was between Michael Cohen and her. 
Oh, my God. Okay. The suit also alleges that Trump's attorney has been trying to intimidate Daniels and scare her into not talking. Yeah, okay. On the next day, Cohen initiated an ex parte arbitration process that resulted in an order barring Daniels from disclosing confidential information. That's in quotes related to the non-disclosure agreement, okay, with 60 Minutes on March 25. Dan, oh, my God, she's, she's, she's been on every show possible from the sounds of it. Daniel said that she and Trump had sex once and that later she had been threatened in front of her infant daughter and felt pressured to later sign a non-disclosure agreement. On, okay, so that was when, she hasn't actually stated when she was threatened, okay. On April 9, FBI agents raided Cohen's office and seized emails, tax documents and business records relating to several matters, including the payment to Daniels. On April 26, Trump, for the first time, admitted that Cohen represents him in the Stormy Daniels deal. Trump's new personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, told Sean Hannity on May 2nd that Trump had has reimbursed Cohen for the payment, stating Trump didn't know about the specifics of it, but he did know about the general arrangement that Michael would take care of things like this. Because he's taken care of things like that prior, obviously, which contradicted mm. Trump's claim on Air Force One of April 5 of having no knowledge of the payment. <clears throat> In August 2018, Cohen pleaded guilty to eight charges. That's right, he took a plea deal, didn't he? Including one related to the scandal, and he stated under oath that he paid Daniels in coordination with and at the direction of a candidate for federal office, meaning Trump. Okay. Um, wow. What's that saying? What a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. So, Sheila, is this all about the publicity and cashing in for Stormy Daniels? Well, I'm going to be really honest with you, Sharon Ann, and tell you I had no idea who the hell Stormy Daniels was. <laughs> Seriously. So when you sent the run sheet through, I went in and looked her up. And it was like, okay. Um, you, are, you just, are you admitting on air that you, you serve porn today? <laughs> No, I read news articles <laughs> and it was actually yesterday um, and one of them said that the judge is about to throw her case out or something. Um, really? Excellent. Hmm, day or so ago. Um, and there was not just one but three or four um, places talking about it. So from my perspective, okay, and, and as an older lady, if you like, I'll be nice about myself, Um I think it is publicity and cashing in. I mean, if we look at this isn't the first president to have um, been involved with a woman outside of his marriage, is it? It's probably not going to be the last. Definitely. <laughs> um, so, you know, if you can tie your name into a, you know, fairly well-known around the world public figure and, and, you know, even bad publicity is publicity, isn't it? That's what they say. So, yeah, um, so, yeah, that I think you're right. So, Amanda G, is it all about the publicity and cashing in for Stormy Daniel? Yeah, I'm going to say yes. And, I mean, you know, again, it's it's one of those, how many people are jumping on the Trump train as soon as they can, you know what I mean? Like, it's, you know, mm. if they can associate themselves either positively or negatively with him, they're trying to do it because it's either bumping up their views or it's, I mean, how many people, the moment that this came out, how many people would have searched Stormy Daniels? How many people might have been looking at porn? How many people might have been, you know, at the, at the end of the day, it bumped views. And for a lot of advertising now, it's all about views. Do I think she's trying to cash in on it? Yes, I do. Does it matter whether or not the case goes through or not? No, because the views are already there. She's already getting the coverage. Yeah, you know, it's not just you know, it's it's you know that those views, those searches, those that's all going. It's all going to end up being cash. You know what I mean? Like it's um, 
with the way that the world works now with with publicity, whereas before you had to go out and actually do something of value, uh, now for a lot of people it's just being associated. So if they can, uh, yep, if, exactly as Sheila said, if they can associate themselves with a big name, then they'll do it in order to ride that gravy train. Yeah, exactly. Bobby, what do you say? Is it about the publicity and cashing in for Stormy Daniels? I'm, I'm sure it is. And, uh, you know, I looked at it as I didn't pay that much attention to it at the time because to me it just sounded like, you know, it, he was divorced from his first wife and, and this is before he married Melania, so he wasn't really cheating on anybody and so he had some high-priced hooker or whatever for one night um, and that was it. And, and then there was an agreement that she signed and the way I see it, she broke the agreement, you know, and, you know, so therefore, you know, I'm sure she had a lawyer that advised her that maybe she should, you know, pursue something else. And so she she actually broke the agreement is what I see it because she sort of kept her mouth shut because that's what she was paid one hundred and thirty thousand dollars to do. Exactly. Yeah, I thoroughly agree. So, Sheila. A lot has been made of the fact that his current wife, Melania, had just given birth to their son, Barron, when the one night stand between Stormy Daniels and President Trump occurred. What are your thoughts? Is, is that true, Bobby? Because you said he was single then. Well, you know, I, I would admit then that I don't know because, um, you know, I'm not really somebody who follows this that closely. I, I thought that it was before, but if they're saying that it was before his first child was born or whatever, you know. I, you know, although, like you say, he's not the first man to, to cheat on his wife. And uh, I don't know. I, I would say, you know, I would go along with uh, whatever you've got quoted there because it, I'm probably wrong about thinking it was before he was married. So, well, well I'll just re redo that then. Sheila, so a lot's been made of the fact that um, his current wife, Melania, and we don't know if they were married at this point, had... Uh, just given birth to their son, Baron, when the one night stand between Stormy Daniels and the president occurred. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I, I thought about that today, Sharon Ann, when I was, you know, reading through tonight's things. And I thought, you know, there's a couple of ways of looking at that from, from my perspective. And one of them was something my mother-in-law used to say. Um, I can't remember the exact wording, but, you know, temptation is one of those things that, um, you know, some people are going to take it and some are not. Um, I used to um, say to people years ago when I worked as a couple counsellor that you can, you can say I would never do this or I would never do that, whether it be have an affair or steal or whatever it might be. But until you're in a given specific set of circumstances, you really do not know how you're going to react. Um, you know, a lot of people have different weaknesses than others um there may be a whole range of things that they would think they might not do but in a, in a specific set of circumstances they they might um we could hope that you know people's marriages would stand up to or relationships would stand up to temptation but if we're really honest we're talking about human behavior and human nature so um I, i'm not going to judge him one way or the other because i wasn't there um, Bobby, what do you say? Um, or or do, you, do you want to have an input into this one? Or? Well, I, I think it's sort of a continuation of the same one. I, I think that now that I'm corrected, I would say that, you know, I would think that it's not very nice for him to be having sex, you know, a few months before his child is born. I think that's, you know, not a very admirable thing to do. But, mm. you know, he, he his lawyer paid her $130 Hundred thirty thousand to keep her mouth shut. She broke the deal, as far as I can see, and you know, and and so there you go. I pretty much think when she married him, she knew what she was getting, personally, and I don't think anyone would have agreed to marry Trump with his history with women and not expected. So, uh, in fact, I I I think she probably even had an arrangement like. Melinda Gates and Bill Gates had. Do you remember their weird arrangement? I reckon mm. Melania and Trump have probably had a have an agreement in place 
prior to marriage that things like that were would probably continue to happen. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, because I don't think you could ever marry someone like Trump with his his history and not expect it. It's it's why it's this also lend, lends to my current theory on why his base is never shocked about him because before he was voted into the presidency, pretty much after ten years of him on the the what was that The Apprentice, the show he was on. Mm -hmm. Everything bad that could possibly come out about him came out in the, the rags during that time. So pretty much before he even said, came down that elevator and said, I'm running for president, the whole country already knew everything possible about him. And that's why I think when when the Dems and other parties that try to bring him down mention things, most of his base say, well, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, we're not stupid, of course, but we didn't vote him in for that. We, we, you know, if we wanted, you know, an exemplary president, they would have voted in Pence, wouldn't they? You know, um, mm. because he's the choir boy. But um, it, what they needed, what what the country needed, was Trump, the businessman, and he comes with a lot of baggage, and they were willing to accept it. And I think that's the one thing that the Democrats just don't haven't been able to get their heads around that. The base that they 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 kind of think everyone on that base is a religious nut and wouldn't accept a lot of their stuff. But the majority of normal Americans are actually his base, and they just say, "Yeah, well, we'll put up with it because he's doing all this," you know. And that's a, that's a normal reaction to the situation. Why do you think? President Trump didn't sign the NDA. <laughs> I've often wondered this now. That was what the first thing that hit me. Well, my, my first thought on that, Sharon Ann, was did he actually know about the NDA at the time or was it done on his behalf? Well, that's what he said, didn't he? He said he just told the guy to go fix it pretty much, hadn't he? So, yeah, maybe there was absolutely no communication on it between the two men. You're right. Yeah. That's, a, that's a plausible reason. What do you think, Amanda? Why didn't he? Why didn't the president sign the NDA, and only Michael Cohen? Well, and and that's the thing. When you look at a lot of the behind the story part of this, is it Cohen is acting? I mean, yes, he's acting for his uh, client, but is it just a case of he is a Lawyer on retainer, you know, yes, he, he is his personal lawyer on retainer. When something like this comes through, rather than bother the, 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 you know, the big man, yeah, I'll just get this sorted. I'll just work this out. Yeah, I'll sign it for him. You know what I mean? So what I, I, I think it was that case of, you know, um, at the end of the day, how many times has he done this for Trump? Yeah. You know, like how, many, how many times has he done the whole... Uh, listen here, Johnny, you know, we've got, a, we've got another one coming through the door. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, mate, just fix it up. Just do what you got to do. He doesn't know the ins and outs. He's not a lawyer. He's a businessman. He leaves the lawyering to the lawyers, not necessarily, whereas the business is Trumpy's domain. I, 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 think, I, I think I agree with Sheila. I don't think he actually knew the ins and outs of this until such time as, because um, even then it was, Something about um, uh, we didn't know the specifics, but he did know about the general arrangement that Michael Cohen would take care of things like this, mm -hmm. um, which contradicted Trump's claim on Air Force One April 5 of having no knowledge of the payment. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, it could be that case of it's only after the fact that he's realised that you know, uh, Cohen's made the payment, has reimbursed him like any good client would do. Mm. And so, I mean, you know what I mean? There's a little bit of grey areas that have really, um, I think, made this, um, why, didn't he, why didn't he sign it? I think because he didn't know. It was just one of those things. Cohen act, has acted in the way that he's acted over numerous occasions. And it's all come out before... You know, maybe Trump. I mean, because you know, yeah, it's all come out before you know um, this has been sorted. So, 
But, you know, so why do I think he didn't sign it? It's because, well, it wasn't a big deal then. No. It wasn't I, a, yeah, I agree. I, I think yeah. Cohen just over kind of overstepped on a few things and said a few things, but it, I think he... I think I've heard Trump say that Cohen was a lawyer that he used occasionally. He wasn't his main guy, and he basically threw him a bone and said, "Look, just fix this up." And then, obviously, I, I don't. I think, like you just said, he he basically came back with a little bit of information now and again, and um, probably just said to him, "Look, I fixed it. That's cool." And um, he probably thought it was in his his client's interest to not have his signature on that and that he'd silenced her with his own so yeah you know, yeah quite frankly i mean it, it shows no paper trail between the president and her does it and again it comes back to you know well i did this for yeah you know, um i mean he he states that you know in coordination with and at the direction of a candidate for federal office again it's that that whole thing of well you know we've We've, um, you know, uh, I mean, yes, Trump has admitted that he's looking after that deal for him. Yet yeah, he admitted that there was no, oh, uh, uh, no, that's not my deal. Yeah, there's a deal there. I don't know the specifics of it. And at the time, he might have on on Air Force One. Again, it's all it's all sort of uh, wishy washy when it all happens, when all the little time frames happen. But it's that case of well, you know, I think. Really, it's, you know, it comes down to that, yes, he's sort of said, I've acted in, in this interest, but again, it's, you know, like with a lot of things, you rely on your lawyer to do the lawyer stuff. Like, so if he's just done it on his own back and gone, well, okay, I'll pay the 130000 that helps get that out of the way, I'll give, you know, Donald the, the invoice later, you know, you know, Trumpy might not have known that he actually had any, any like anything owing. So, of course, when asked about, oh, I actually have no idea what you're talking about, and it could be very much the truth. the The worst thing is, it is a lot of it is. Well, I, I I say that this happened, and and that happened, and that happened, and that's what Stormy's doing, and and of course, then Cohen's doing the same thing. Well, I've done this, and I've done that, and I've done this. And you know, really, mm. it's it's three three or five different stories all happening at once. And really, it's as you know, it's a perception. This is what I think. This is what I was seeing happening at the time that I was involved. And you know, it's um yeah. So what I I think that Trump actually had no idea until such time as he received an invoice for hundred thirty thousand. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the same. I'm, I'm on the same train with you. So, Bobby, why do you think President Trump didn't sign the NDA? I agree with uh, both you and uh, and Amanda because, uh, because basically, I think the same thing. I mean, and the lawyer, he's not going to take one hundred thirty thousand dollars out of his pocket and pay this woman off without knowing that his he's going to get reimbursed. But he, <laughs> you know, he does he doesn't you know, file, you know, an invoice to Trump immediately, probably. So maybe Trump didn't know. And the other thing is, a contract is an agreement between two people. And so it was between the lawyer and this woman. And still, she got paid, she accepted the agreement, and she should have kept her mouth shut, and she didn't. And, you know, so maybe Trump didn't exactly know about it at the time. No, do you know what I think, though? I think Michael Cohen should sue the pants off her, literally, and get his money back. That 130 grand now, because I think yeah. Yeah, she, she, she didn't keep a word. So um, now, I, she, I thought the 130 grand was returned. I thought she did return it. Oh, I haven't heard that. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. But but then again, as you can see, I could be wrong. So um, Sheila, do you think this scandal has influenced the U.S. voter at all? No. Um, no, I don't <laughs> I, I think it's just another let's throw a stone. So, you know, the people who are on Trump's side are going to probably look at it the way the four of us have this evening, our time, and say, well, you know, it's just one of those things. Um, from the 
the other side who do not vote for Trump, well, it just gives them another nail to bang into his coffin, but whether it actually influences them. The one thing that puzzles me, though, guys, is why 130,000? It's an odd number from my perspective. You know, mm. you'd think 100,000, 125, 150 maybe, even a, even at 100 and something thousand, it's not a lot of money to be paying someone, from my perspective, to keep their mouth shut about something <laughs> if you've got a really, you know, um, position that you're wanting to protect, is it? Well, especially when you think how much she, could she have gotten from yeah. doing the shows? I mean, she could yeah. be raking it in. <laughs> exactly. And that's, so, without, you know, well, I think yeah, that's, that's why I real. question that one. I think that's mm. that's why I think that's exactly why she she's done what she's been doing. She basically handed the money back and then said yes to every offer open to her. Literally, yeah. I mean, I mean, I think she'd go to a, the opening of an envelope at this point, don't you? Yes, <laughs> I've seen her everywhere. She's like, I just did a quick search, and I mean, she's even gone to she's even flown internationally to like I saw her on a British TV show, a morning show, and I'm just sitting there thinking, oh my god. They, they even flew, flew her into England too. <laughs> they, they must be short on news items or something. <laughs> oh, there is. So, uh, Bobby, you're American. Did the scandal influence you at all? Um, not at all because personally the way I look at all these things is uh, I don't really care what the people do in their private lives. I'm concerned about their performance. And it, it, this did not affect his performance and will not affect his performance. And it's like if I like uh, music by, by an artist and I don't care what they do in their personal life. If I like their music, I like their music. So I, I tend to, you know, keep the two separate. Yeah, yeah, thoroughly agree. So, Sheila, do you think that Stormy Daniels did default on the NDA between herself and Michael Cohen then? And... If she hasn't, should she return the 130000 paid for her silence? Well, I'm of the belief, Sharon Ann, from many years ago that um, a gentleman's agreement or a handshake agreement, whether it's between a man and a woman or two men or whatever, is by me in a court of law. So if you've made an agreement that you're going to take a payment, a financial reward for something, and then you follow that up by signing a non-disclosure agreement, then you've got definitely gone against what you've agreed to. That To me, that's very much a default. And if she has still got the 130000 I'd be wanting it back with interest. I agree. Amanda, do you think that Stormy Daniels did default on the NDPA? And if she hasn't already, should she return the money? So it was, it was one of those things where she believed that they had actually originally that they had actually um so like saying that it was um uh because the the nda was put out into the wall the the wall street magazine she believes that it was null and voided is is that correct no, um, basically there were three signatories on the NDA. There was Michael Cohen, there was Stormy yeah. Daniels, and then there was a blank space where uh, President Trump was supposed to sign, but he didn't. Yeah, but that's the thing. So um, after the existence of the NDA was revealed by the Wall Street Journal in 2018, Daniel sued Trump and Cohen to argue that the agreement is invalid. So she obviously believed that they leaked the document to the Wall Street Journal, um, in order to do. If it was me and I was in Stormy Daniels' thing and I was a little bit like, hmm, okay, first of all, I would have actually gone and seen my own lawyer and said, right, okay, so what's happened? Is this a violation? Because I'm prepared, I'm about to go to every single TV and, and magazine and everything like that and get everything I can get. So, you know, like, and again, one hundred and thirty thousand is a really odd number. It, it, it it's an odd number to be paying someone for their silence. But you know, at the end of the day, each their own. Um, you know, so I I think she has assumed, and on that assumption, has made a very silly mistake of just starting to go out there and just 
air her dirty laundry, basically. It's it's and, and jump on it. As I said, I, I really do think that she's cashing in on wanting to be, you know, associated with uh, Trumpy in any way that she can to further her own career or in, or, or whatever. Um, do like did she default? Yes, I do think she did because of that fact that I mean. It's been made known that there's a non-disclosure agreement there, but did it actually, you know what I mean? Like, has it actually named her as part of the, the thing, or has she just then suddenly gone, well, there's an NDA out there uh, with Trumpy's name on it, apparently, but it doesn't actually have his name on it, uh, and, and has has jumped jumped in going sort of like, well, I'm bailing shit, you know what I mean? So she's, I really think she's overact- overreacted um, and and has basically yeah really shoved her foot in it um, by sort of doing the well if it's out there I'm going to be the first one that says it all and gets all the money. Does she need to pay that hundred and thirty thousand back? Yes, because she has broken the contract, as Bobby has said, and even Sheila has said, and yourself. She signed that to say that she wouldn't talk about it. She wouldn't discuss any details. She wouldn't disclose anything that's the non-disclosure agreement that's the whole point you don't disclose anything you signed it and and at the end of the day it's her name that's on that she signed it with her own signature you know and so yeah she banked the check man like it'd be different if the check hasn't been banked she handed that check back fresh or ripped it up or whatever she did and said no i don't agree and all that sort of stuff before signing it, she had it. She had a choice there. She had a choice, and she made the choice to uh, basically air her dirty laundry, even though she had already stated that she wouldn't. That just, I mean, again, it's it's that's a legally binding contract that she has signed. She has done the wrong thing, and she that's the penalty is that she should be paying that hundred thirty thousand back because that's what that hundred thirty thousand was for. Is to essentially, as much as sometimes we we don't like to use the terms. By her silence, they have brought her silence with 130000 She has been the one that's gone, well, hang on a second, I might be able to get a bit more, and she has tried to get more from it. And, again, I, I think she's, uh, you know, again, I think that's that's wrong. She has, she has broken a legally binding contract uh, by disclosing her details. You know what I mean? So, you know, yeah, you know, no. When I when I read that part, Amanda, I instantly thought that she's the one that leaked it to the Wall Street yeah. Because I think yeah. that the moment he became president, she saw dollar signs. If he hadn't yeah. been I don't reckon this would have happened. I reckon that she, she had plan B kicked in. So what do yeah. you think, Bobby? Do you think that Stormy Daniels did default on the NDA between herself and Michael Cohen? And should she have returned the money if she hasn't already? Okay, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that uh, that she, I think she did return the money, but what probably happened was she got advice from her own lawyer at some point, and he said, you know, 130000 that's nothing. You know, I can get you a lot more. And, uh, you know, basically he, he came up with a plan for her to just somehow this gets leaked and she's going to go on touring. She'll probably write her own book. And I agree with you that, you know, if... If um, if she, Prince Trump didn't get elected, this might have she might have just stayed with 130, and I don't think 130 is a weird number because what might have happened is he might have said, "I'm prepared to offer you 100 grand," and she said, "No, I want like 150," and he said, "All right, 130, Kate, let's do it. It's done." And so, you know, compromised. So, look, I'm interested. Was 130 just for the silence, or was that also for the night of sex? What else did she get? <laughs> I'm just thinking. I probably wouldn't sleep with him for 130 grand. <laughs> I just, what? Does anyone know if she got anything as well? Because I'm sorry, I'm finding I have a problem with the 132, but it's not because of what you're saying. It's because I just wouldn't sleep with him for that much money. It's not enough. I'm sorry. Well, I'm getting saying that. Remember, Trumpy yeah. is still – well, I mean, um, Bobby, you'd probably be able to um, agree with this. Even before he was a president, he was, he was, he was a, a, a well-known man. 
I mean, Trump Trump doesn't have Trump Towers for the sake of, you know, because he's, you know, um, because he's a nobody. He has, he, he, he's, he's, he was a well-known man before he became a, a president, true? Is that, is oh, that yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, of course. Yeah, he so, was I mean, a big real estate man. Yeah, so, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, it wouldn't matter if he didn't become president. I still think that he would be a big enough name and worth enough that if she had gotten a lawyer that turned around and said, hang on, I think I can get you a bit more money, I don't think it would matter if he was a president or not. Because, I mean, Trump has been renowned for his his uh, uh, non-monogamous uh, ways. I mean, look, he's he is a... He has been renowned for being a womanizer. He's been renowned for being, uh, you know, caught up with various women in various situations. Um, he's he, it's nothing new to him. You know what I mean? So, it, it the fact that he's a president. I mean, he's and again, as you guys said, he's not the first president to have done this. So, one hundred thirty thousand seems like a kind of chicken feed to a man of his. Uh, class or stature or or even level, you know. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm 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 sort of one of those where I think, gee, 130,000. That's that's not a lot. I mean, for for if if you were going to try and buy someone's silence, I mean, granted, the book wouldn't be very long if she wrote a book. I mean, it's a one night stand. It's not like it's been 60 years. It's it's one night. It's going to be about three pages. You know, I mean, it's that, I can't imagine it going any longer than three pages. Um, so, you know what I mean? So for 130000 it's not like she's she's really going to get anything from it except a few interviews, maybe a couple of magazine things, you know, uh, you know front page or, or, or a double-page spread on a, on a, you know, magazine. I mean, it's there, there's not that much to it. Um, it's... The, the kiss and tell is pretty much three pages long, like. Yeah. So 130000 and he was worth, he's, he's worth how much? You know what I mean? So 130000 seems like, for, for hush money, seems really uh, like a real weird number for her to then suddenly go, well, hang on, I could get more. Like, it's, um yeah, I don't, I don't know. It just seems, it seems like, yeah, it's, I, I don't know. For me, it's just weird. Now, look, the timing in that, it's all around the presidency, I think. I mean, I, I, pr I, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure that I'm just wondering how he actually got her into bed in the first place <laughs> because, because, yeah, that wouldn't entice me at all. It would have to be a shitload more than that. Um, I'm, I'm talking a lot of money. <laughs> but anyway, well... Um, Sheila, why do you think the US media are so fixated on this scandal, considering um, the hypothetical other women that he's paid off over the years? I mean, if you believe the media, there's been a string of women over the years he's been paying off. I don't actually know if that's true or not, so I'm saying hypothetical here. Um, but if that was the case, why, what, and the US media seems to think it, why are they so fixated on this? It's just, it goes on, it's been going on. 2011 from the looks of this every year they seem to bring it up I, I think from what I've seen of the US media um, they print what they're told and it depends on who's giving the orders or the instructions um, you know because I spend a lot of time as I said back um, when the election was on watching YouTube videos and things like that and you were having people from if we say alternative in um, inverted commas, saying, you know, this is what's happening. And then you were getting places like I think it was Fox News going, oh, no, this is what's happening. So are we telling people what we want them to believe or what we think they want to hear or are we actually reporting the truth? And, um, you know, I grew up believing that what was in the newspaper was supposedly true. It was only as I got older and I thought, you know, and you start to read between the lines and then realise that, you know, some poetic licence, if you like, helps sell newspapers or, um, you know, um, all the things that go with, you know, having a, a news station or something like that. So that that's my feeling on it, Sharon, and I've... I've 
I'm not picking up energetically, if you like, anything else that says there's something else in this or something that needs to be looked at more deeply. Okay. It just seems to be that's, but that's just my perception. That's not necessarily the truth. So interesting to see what everyone else says. So Amanda Jean, what do you think the US media are so fixated on this particular scandal over all others, I suppose? I mean, they're fixated on a lot of things, but this one just doesn't go away. Mm. And, and I think, again, it's coming down to circumstance. Since 2011, I mean, he did he did The Apprentice and all that sort of stuff. And, and that's really where, you know, when you when you think about a lot of, a lot of it started coming out was once he started becoming a bit of a, an icon on TV even, you know, it's trying to discredit and all that sort of stuff. And, and, you know, he'd made a couple of, you know, uh, very, um, you know, uh, you know, even, even as far back as, you know, uh, early two thousands, uh, started making these things about, uh, you know, jokingly, oh, I should go for president, bloody blah, 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 you know, and everyone thought, oh yeah, he's just having a bit of a moment. Um, and then suddenly, you know, he started becoming known for his work or his, his show, The Apprentice, and and started getting, you know, he started becoming quite popular. And again, as we know, with, with some people, it is that, that case of if someone starts getting a little bit too powerful, that's a bit of a rogue like Trump is, uh, they start going, hang on a second, we need to, we need to be able to you know, rein this person in. We need to be able to try and control or, or bring bring about a, a, a change or a shortening the following down a little bit. You know, he's getting a little bit too big for his boots apparently. And I think that's where this scandal, when you think about it, you, you think back to, you know, um, you know, Clinton and all that sort of stuff. I mean, remember when, you know, his, his scandal came out with uh, Monica, you know, it was that thing of, you know, he denied it and then suddenly it all came out and then, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it, and it was such a scandal, which really destroyed his career. Like it, 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 that was, that was sort of the moment that Bill basically lost his, his, his ability to even think about staying in politics because it had just basically shattered everything. Um, I think, I think it was the moment and I think, I did not have sexual relations with that. <laughs> that was the, the, that, the line yeah. reverberating. Yep. Exactly, exactly. How do you not, you know, and I think that's the thing with this is they're hoping that, um, you know, I mean, because that's the thing. I mean, Trump hasn't just gone into presidency and sort of sat back and gone, oh, yeah, you know, everything's rainbows and, and unicorns. He's gone, no, nah, man, I've got to do some hard work and da 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 And he is producing some outcomes which um, that have been, again, uh, businessly minded and, 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 it's, and, it's, and, it's, um, and, and it's producing a, a flow and effect in America itself, which is, you know, his whole idea. Um, the thing is, I think with the Stormy Daniels thing, is they really are trying, you know, it's a bit like that old squeaky wheel. They're, they're trying to get momentum, traction, whatever. They're trying to get it to be looked at, yet it's not, it's everyone's sort of going, but, yeah, we know that. We know he's like that. We we didn't put him into presidency because we knew he was clean cut, shaven, with a great hair. We put him in there because we knew he could do the job. So we really don't care but the problem is there's that perception that this is scandalous this is this is you know uh you know this should be ending his career when in actual fact it's not but they're trying to keep it flowing in that media to try and tarnish yet i think he's just you know i think it's uh, it's, it's not gain, gaining any traction it's no. not getting any stick yeah no, I the guy is just coated in Teflon. That's what I, I think. <laughs> every, time yeah. they throw, every time they throw something at him, Bobby, it just slides off. So, Bobby, why do you think the US media are so fixated on this scandal in particular? I mean, it's the only female kind of scandal for him. I mean, not like Ka Kavanaugh's got like four of them now, hasn't he? But um, <laughs> this one's just his... his he, we've actually... Actually, that's what I've, I've missed, I think, the last 
couple of weeks. Um, there was actually a little bit of a reprieve from Trump because Kavanaugh was taking all the hits from the sounds of it. And I missed that window of like breathing, which I'm a bit peeved about. But Bobby, back to you. Why do you think the US media are so fixated on this? Well, the, the US media <clears throat> has been against Trump all along. And it's like they were against him, you know, when he was campaigning. I mean, they're basically a democratically controlled media. And uh, that's why everybody calls them, the, you know, the, the false media or whatever. And they look to alternative news to get the stories because, you know, they just keep hammering on Trump. No matter what, they'll find something to hammer on him, no matter what he does. And so basically, uh, that's why, why I think they keep doing it. Now, I, I hear what you're saying, Sharon, but, you know, I, I think maybe she got paid some money for the night as it is, and then this then this silencer uh, agreement money was just extra money when they realized that they needed to shut her up. But it's like, uh, you know, $130,000 for a middle-aged, washed-out, you know... The, the Dems at the moment, they seem to glorify these people that none of us really have any respect for. Um and she's like the epitome of, like, she's been held up as a feminist icon. And I'm sorry, but I don't want that icon. And in fact, I don't even want half the feminist crap that's being thrown out at the moment. I don't know about you, you Amanda and um, Sheila, but I, I think I'll stick to second wave feminism because this third wave, and they're all batshit crazy. I don't know. <laughs> well, and, and the thing is, too, I mean, I guess the, the part is, too, like, I mean, Stormy is being portrayed as this, um, uh, you know, very um, beautiful, and you know she, you know, she's a mother. And when you think about it, think, think about the the image that she's she's hard working, hard working, um, you know, and and trying to, um, you know, and, and and she's been taken advantage of, and she's been threatened, and she's a she's you know she's a a mother, and and you know, she's a, you know, strong woman and, and she's standing up to the man and all that sort of stuff. And that's the thing is it's, it's sort of gone, you know, she's, she's a, a, a almost like a, a perfect um, uh, picture of, you know, how, you know, um, Trump could be destroying the, the, um, the uh, inverted commas, you know, purest uh, view or, or lifestyle or, or whatever it is. And, it, and it's because, I mean, you know, um, whenever you see her, you don't see her at home in her, her, her sweaties. You're seeing her all dolled up with her hair done nice and, and makeup on and, and all that sort of stuff. You know, it's um, – you're not seeing her in a work outfit, are you? No. So – let, let's I mean? hope so, that's Amanda Jean if she's a porn star. <laughs> um, but that's the thing. So you know, when you look at it, they're not they're not talking about her in they're they're talking about her as um, a a mother and a, 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 a you know a, a, a beautiful young woman who's in her prime, etc., etc., etc. They're not talking about the fact that that was her job. Her job, which I thought also contained confidentiality as well was as a either a porn star or a um or as a, a an escort mm. so you know what i mean like it's you would think that even in that profession there still has to be an element of confidentiality so you know i i it's it's a you know i mean she's been painted in a very different view to what she is and then then labeling her as uh, feminist and this and that, and I think because they're trying to get get attraction on this this whole thing of well, Donald's done something wrong when Donald, you know, um, I mean at the end of the day we weren't there, we weren't there in the room with them, we weren't, Thank you God. know, we we did, yeah, <laughs> um, we don't know what's going on, we don't know what what transaction is being made. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's a yeah, it's a it's a bit of a giggle snort, really. I I find this a uh, this this is um quite fascinating this one because it is 
it's it's got nothing it's it's not holding anything to mm. anything out of the ordinary to what's what Donald is. I mean, you know, I mean, back in the nineties, he was renowned for being, you know, quite, you know, uh, full on with the ladies. So, you know, he hasn't like it's. It's not that he's changed or anything. It's just that what now is on a on big scale on a big stage, and and uh, people are trying to, you know, they're they're trying to, you know, be associated with that big stage thing. You know what I mean? So, yeah. no, yeah. I know, I know what you're saying. So, um. Do you think that the people that voted for President Trump knew what they were getting? A businessman with faults, and that's why scandal after scandal doesn't seem to affect his popularity. Is is that the bottom line? I, I would say yes, Sharon. And um, as Amanda Jeans has been saying, you know, he's been around for a long time. He's been a very flamboyant figure. And you know, people really do know what they're getting. You know, the leopard doesn't change its spots, does it? No. Um, and, you know, with all the stuff that's come out about previous presidents, and we don't need to name them, I'm sure, um, do people expect when they vote in a president that they're going to be, um, you know, a, a pillar of... Um, everything that's taken as good and, you know, lawful and wonderful because there's going to be an awful lot of pressure, I think, on anyone in that sort of position to, um, you know, cross the line. Um, and, and that's where I think the whole Stormy Daniels things come in, as, as we were saying before, giving that money back. Somebody may have made her a better offer. Yeah, yeah. I think definitely, to be honest. Um, uh, it's interesting what you just said, though, about... I think about the, the every president coming in has a skeleton, but do you know what? I think there's been a turning point. To me, I think from this point on, we're never going to see um, a president that we have prior. They're all going to be, and, and is it social? I think it might be social media that's the real culprit here, and this ability of everybody to be able to video and record things. I think from this point on. I think Trump's just the first president to be completely exposed. And that's, that's yeah. why there's a news story every day as well. Um, yeah. Because there's always a camera on him. There's always, you know, whereas previously they could escape, you know. Um, yeah. And I, I think maybe maybe a lot of the a lot of people are thinking it's all Trump, but I think a good percentage of it might just be new media. Um, yeah. So, Bobby, do you think that the people that voted for President Trump knew what they were getting, a businessman with faults, and that's why scandal after scandal doesn't seem to affect his popularity? Yeah, I think they knew what they were getting to a certain extent. I don't think they thought he was a choir boy. I mean, I don't think you rise to the top, so to speak, in real estate, you know, by, by being a choir boy. You have to know how to wheel and deal. If you're in there with the snakes, you know, you have to... You have to have some snake part to deal with them. But, you know, well, that's what we wanted. We wanted somebody to come in here and straighten this place out. And, uh, and when he said drain the swamp, you know, everybody knew what that meant. That meant, like, get rid of all these sleazy, you know, things that are, are in here for, like, years and years and, and totally clean this place out so that we could have a decent, you know, government again. Mm. Yeah, no, look, I, I agree with you. And Amanda, do you think that the people that voted for the president knew what they were getting, a businessman with faults? Yeah, I, I do. Because, I mean, as I said, I mean, he's been in the limelight, oh, like, you know, 80s and 90s, you know, uh, and then he, you know, he sort of went quiet for a, a smidge. And then he, in 2000, he came back with The Apprentice and, and, and he sort of, you know, bumped his way back up through that way and then has become, you know, and, and he hasn't been backwards in coming forwards. I mean, he is a man that has, he has, uh, you know, like when he, when all this stuff comes out, he just pretty much goes, yeah, yeah, actually it did. It, yeah, of course it did. Yeah, absolutely. And, but then he's also honest in saying, oh shit, actually I have no idea. Um, uh, hang on a second. Let me get back to you on that one. Like he's, 
So mm. at the end of the day, I think that, yes, they knew they were getting a businessman with fault. As Bobby said, that's what they wanted. They wanted someone that could come in and look at the, uh, look at the country and say, right, this is what we need to do. I have to treat this like a business, not as, not as like my plaything. I need to treat this as a business because if I don't, then this isn't going to work. Okay, yes, that means that I'm going to have to, I'm going to, you know, look, I'm going to have to air my dirty laundry because I'm a president and they're going to be expecting that. He's already been plastered over social media for how many years? And even before that, it was the tabloids or the newspaper or the the TV news. I mean, he he's no stranger to scandal. He is no stranger to um, rumours, nothing. So for him, it doesn't worry him. And therefore, most people, it's it's a bit of that whole, well, if he's not worried about it, I'm not worried about it. You know what I mean? Whereas with others in the past, other presidents in the past, they were like, oh, no, that never happened. I never did anything like that. So, of course, then the person goes, well, they never did it. And then when he said, well, actually, I did, then they've turned around and gone, hang on a second, you've lied. Whereas he hasn't. He's basically said, yeah, man, I've got warts. I've got crazy ass stuff. He's not worried about it and I think that's why it hasn't affected his popularity because he turns around and says yeah actually I did do that and as you said it's it means that the next presidents from here on man they will admit that they have done anything and everything because they realize that the more they do that the more people like them because they're real they realize that these are humans they're not a god they're not anything out of the ordinary yes trump has an ego and yes he works that ego brilliantly stormy daniels attorney michael abenati has stated that he would like to run for president is he delusional Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yes. Stormy Daniels has just announced that she has a book coming out titled Full Disclosure about her life that will include details of her one night stand with the president. How do you think the president will react when it's released, Sheila? Well, I, I could see him finding it quite humorous, actually. So he'll have a laugh. Amanda? It's going to be three pages three pages long. Seriously, I think he's going to have a giggle. Is it going to be an e-book? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I, not, I really hope it's not going to be a comic version because then we'd actually have visuals. Bobby? <laughs> Um, I don't think he's going to care, and she's going to make a real book out of it because she's, she's going to have her whole life leading up to how she got into this business. She's going to, you know, and she'll probably have Ghostwire anyway. True, very true. Now, finally, guys, on this subject, has the world had enough of Stormy Daniels and her ridiculously sized breasts? Absolutely, again. <laughs> Amanda? Yes. 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 Definitely that's, enough. That's a hundred percent. Then, so okay. Well, that's all for our podcast. Thanks for listening. And remember, if you want to support what we do, then share, subscribe and leave a positive review over on iTunes for the open-minded skeptic. My team and I look forward to entertaining you once again in our next podcast. To check when our next podcast is, simply head over to www.tomspod.com. That's www.tomspod.com. Dot com.